Approximately one year after Absolute Carnage and a full two years into the Donny Cates Ryan Stegman era of Venom, the Symbiote Saga builds to another crossover event in 2020's King in Black. King in Black promises to deliver on the coming of Null, the god of symbiotes introduced to the Marvel Universe way back in the Kate Stegman first Venom story arc that launched the series into must-read status. We'll see how the event shakes out, but in theory, this promises to deliver on the cosmic symbiote promise the creative team have been building towards since the start of Marvel Fresh Start in 2018. Today I'll answer, who is Null and why does he matter to Venom? What comics should you read to prepare for the King in Black event? And has Venom lived up to the hype since launch again in 2018? Hey everybody, I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. You are listening to The Road to the King in Black. If you like the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel or podcast, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. You can find full event and comic book reading orders on comicbookherald.com with links in the show notes. Spoilers for discussed comics may follow, although I will try to keep this relatively spoiler-free if you would like to jump in to the Venom experience for yourself. You can find the Road to Guide over on CBH for that. So who is Null? In the first story of Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman's Venom, the creative team expands on the mythos of Eddie Brock in the symbiotes to include Null, the god and creator of the first symbiotes. Null is a tremendously cosmic addition to the Marvel Universe, in existence before the Big Bang, creating his symbiote sword inside a murdered celestial as the universe begins. Null has been the big bat of this extremely popular Venom run ever since, and again, now we are finally building towards and seemingly delivering on his actual arrival at planet Earth in the King in Black event. Technically speaking, the origins of Null extend back to Jason Aaron and Isad Rubich's highly recommended Thor God of Thunder, in issue number 6 to be specific, which more fully unravels the history and mystery of All Black the Necrosword, a cosmic weapon of immense power created by our guy Null, as we've come to learn. This is optional reading for understanding the King in Black, but honestly, one, this run is fantastic and highly recommended on its own terms. Seriously, you should all read Thor God of Thunder. And two, Aaron's work here inspires a lot of Donny Cates' larger cosmic vision for the Marvel Universe. Cates and the team make it so that the gods that fell to Gore's world, Gore is the god butcher of Thor, uh, god of thunder, that, that one of those gods was Null, and that this is how Gore got All Black the Necrosword, aka Null's symbiote, from him in that future timeline in which Gore the god butcher, again, has this kind of, you know, Null-powered blade. Unsurprisingly, reading the full Kate Stegman era Venom run is the best way to prepare for King in Black. The first collected hardcover collects Venom number 1 to number 12, which serves as the absolute most essential information setting the stage for this event. If you're digging it, or just want the web of Venom one shots integrated into your read chronologically, you'll want to proceed from there with the full Comic Book Herald Venom reading order, but if you're on more of a fast track kick, i jump ahead here to Absolute Carnage and keep on rolling. I think, again, like if you want the full experience and you're invested, you're definitely going to want to read everything that Donny Cates is writing in the Venom verse. but if you want a little fast track guide, you could definitely go the first 12 issues and then jump yourself ahead to the Absolute Carnage event. Before proceeding with the most relevant Venom storylines, you may also consider jumping into more of Null's backstory. Kate's five-issue cosmic Silver Surfer Black Mini, with the jaw-droppingly incredible visuals of Trad Moore, is heavily connected to the coming of Null in the pages of King in Black. If you only read one part of Kate's Marvel Cosmic Universe, it should definitely be Silver Surfer Black, at least in the context of getting to King in Black. And for my money, it's definitely my favorite of that run as well, because of Trad Moore's incredible, incredible visuals. At the height of his power, Null conquers worlds in an ultimate quest to snuff out the light. During a journey back in time, due to the events of Kate's written Guardians of the Galaxy, Norn Rad encounters Null and barely escapes their violent encounter. Null is effectively left to continue his march of conquest, but the Surfer establishes a connection. In short, Kate's and company have integrated Null not only into the heart of the Venom mythos, but into Marvel cosmology itself. Null has been around forever if Kate's and Stegman are to be believed. In Absolute Carnage, the five main issues of 2019's Absolute Carnage event gets us to the arrival of the titular King in Black, and it's a gorgeous-looking event comic from artist Ryan Stegman and J.P. Mayer. 
For my money, Absolute Carnage is well worth the read to understand the Venom, uh, you know, road from Venom to King and Black as a journey, although as a standalone event, it definitely suffers for operating as such a clear middleman. Absolute Carnage has one of my favorite opening event issues in some time, with Venom and Spider-Man teaming up against the growing threat of Carnage and his desire to bring the power of Null to Earth, but the event loses significant steam as it becomes more and more apparent it's all just building to something else. It's definitely something that Marvel and DC events in the Big Two can be guilty of. The biggest takeaway by Events End is that one, Null is coming to Earth. He is going to come here, he is bringing his threat, and that threat is going to arrive for Earth's Mightiest Heroes. And two, Eddie Brock's son Dylan, who is developed and, and created in this series, as he doesn't know he's Eddie's son and, and Eddie kind of pretends he's his brother for a bit, he is connected to symbiotes in previously unexpected and powerful ways that will definitely play a role in King in Black. This is really where we've been in the Venomverse ever since, with a slow build of Dylan's connections to the symbiotes through the story's Venom Island, and now into the Venom Beyond story arc, which is the final story before we get to the King in Black event itself. Again, you can check out the full event reading order via Combo Carol's Absolute Carnage Guide, in which I ranked how worthwhile every tie-in issue was as issues came out. It's definitely also worth calling out the Venom Wraith one-shot, one of the more recent Web of Venom entries. It actually is the most recent entry in the Web of Venom one-shots, and it's fairly integral to the Kate Stegman Venomverse, and the most direct setup for the cosmic framing of the King in Black event. Wraith is a fairly obscure Marvel Cosmic player who debuted in Annihilation Conquest and most recently returned in the Kate's written Guardians of the Galaxy. I think fans of the Abnett and Lanning run in Marvel Cosmic Universe definitely might remember Wraith a bit, but he's certainly a supporting character even back in those awesome, awesome Marvel Cosmic events, and Kate's has taken a, a somewhat shine to the character bringing him back here. The Wraith one-shot overlaps with the ending of Absolute Carnage, as Null is freed from his prison planet Clintar, home of the symbiotes. Wraith confronts Null, who determines Wraith, who uh, determines that Wraith's bonded armor, the Exelon, is actually a failed symbiote experiment over which Null has complete control. He removes Wraith's bond, but more importantly, as the Kree Wraith drifts through space, the God of Light finds him and transports him to Earth and Eddie Brock to set the stage for a battle between Null as the God of Darkness and this newer God of Light. That is definitely a development that is going to play a major role, I think, in the cosmic uh, proceedings of this event. We don't really know a lot about this light force that has taken over Wraith. Moving ahead to Thor, following Jason Aaron's heralded run on various Thor titles from 2012 to 2019, Donny Cates and Nick Klein took over in 2020 with a new series launch. It's very early in the run, we're about, I think, eight or nine issues deep, but expect Thor to integrate into the saga of Null. Like I stated up front with Thor God of Thunder, the Venom and Thor verses have been connected in unexpected ways for much of this story, and it stands to reason Kate's could continue this trend. This was something Jason Aaron reached into actually a little bit in War of the Realms, giving a little bit of shout out to Null in his own uh, you know, recent Thor event, and I expect these, these titles will overlap a little bit as well. Now, as far as I know, based on solicits and announcements, announcements. Thor does not officially have any tie-in issues with King and Black, but I would be surprised if that didn't change here in the near future. Null. Is he good? <laughs> is this a good villain? If it wasn't already clear, Null is very much at the center of the Donny Cates Marvel Cosmic Universe, and King in Black is, at least in theory, what the years-long saga has been building towards. There's a lot of pressure on King in Black to deliver, as Marvel's been setting the stage for Null for such a long time that reader fatigue is already a problem well before the event delivers. I do think that Null is in danger of sort of succumbing to the fate of the Batman who laughs over on the DC side, where there's so much hype and so much press and build up and and not necessarily the story to back it up that fans and certain kinds of readers will turn on it before the character really even takes off i think again for the venom heads that's not going to be a problem right if you're invested in this run and it's been quite good typically i think we're all excited to see what's going to happen with null but definitely the character needs to you know when you're a huge cosmic entity and you're operating on this enormous scale there needs to be something special rather than just being big larger than than life and powerful and we need to see some more of that from null 
in King in Black. What else can we expect? Well, Null is coming to Earth, which means Eddie is definitely going to be roping in his Avengers pals as well as some of the other heroes across the Marvel Universe. We saw this a little bit in Absolute Carnage, including even an Avengers one-shot tie-in, where Eddie, you know, Venom does have certain ties to the Avengers, right? Especially during the Flash Thompson days, if you remember the Rick Remender written run. You know, this is a character who has some ties and connections to, like, Captain America, for example. This isn't the Venom of... Uh, early Spider-Man, you know, in the late 80s or in the 90s, that is like just clearly a villain and totally disconnected from the heroic scene. So we can expect him to be reaching out to these characters much like he did in the Venom Island story arc before this point. Some other threads that I think we can expect to play a role here. Well, the Maker has been a supporting player in uh, the Donny Case run. Now, the Maker is Ultimate Universe Reed Richards, who escaped from the Ultimate Universe at the end of that universe at the, in 2015 Secret Wars into Earth-616, which is where all the, the Marvel stories take place. The Maker has been bouncing around. We saw recently that his ultimate plan, uh, to, to pardon the pun there, was basically to try to bring back the Ultimate Universe using the symbiote uh, formula, the symbiote technology of the Ultimate Universe, and that has led basically to Eddie and Dylan going into the Venom Beyond story. So we don't really know, I think at this point, where the maker is or exactly what his role will be, but it would be strange if he didn't have a role in King and Black given his presence elsewhere. As you'd expect for a Marvel event, there will be a bunch of one-shots and tie-ins as well. And much like Absolute Carnage, at least based on solicits and announcements per mid-October 2020, King and Black will not disrupt too many ongoing Marvel series. There are exceptions, opting instead for limited event-specific books. Honestly, the announcements so far are occasionally pretty exciting. You can find all the upcoming tie-ins listed on the Comic Book Herald King and Black reading order, and I'll be placing them chronologically as the story unfolds. Highlights that really grab me so far include Iron Man Doctor Doom one shot, the relaunch of Black Cat, Return of the Valkyries, and some of the creators involved like Paul Grist on The Union and Cy Spurrier on a Black Knight one shot that was announced just this week. Of course, nothing has my attention quite like the Immortal Hulk one shot tie-in written by Immortal Hulk master Al Ewing himself. The Immortal Hulk Absolute Carnage one shot was absolutely one of the highlights of Absolute Carnage. It was a fairly loose tie-in, um, actually just plays more relevant and kind of essential to the Immortal Hulk mythos, but definitely if you're reading Immortal Hulk and if you're a Marvel fan, I don't know how you could not be. It is literally, it's either 1A or 1B on my favorite Marvel books year in and year out. Uh, this book is going to, to be interesting and engaging and probably matter for both series, so definitely check it out. So we're heading to the end of this Road to the King of Black, which kind of gives us to theory territory in terms of what this event might actually entail. My biggest theory for this is probably one, I think it's somewhat likely that Eddie Brock could die or be disconnected from the Venom symbiote at the end of the story. We've kind of been on that train, on that on that track for a while now in the Venom mythos. Venom and, and you know the symbiote and Eddie have been separated time and time again. At the same time, we've been building up Dylan Brock as you know having all these interesting connections to the symbiote i think that's really going to get amped up here i think it's possible coming out of the venom beyond story arc in which uh eddie and dylan right now are in this alternate distant future in which basically everything is symbiote controlled dylan could age up when they come back and become our new venom or or more intriguing still we could embrace you know fully embrace a true venom family where we have like more of a team of venoms that are all kind of brocks <laughs> going forward currently again we're in venom beyond and that is where this story is we need to get out of this future <laughs> where venoms rule everything around me and get back to earth 616 that we know for king in black to begin again if you're not caught up it is only like 30 issues of Venom plus all the web of Venom one shots you know so that would probably push it closer to 40 so it's a, a fairly reasonable binge to do before King and Black begins on December 2nd 2020 so if you're watching along definitely let me know what you think about where venom's at right now what you think about the king and black event what you're looking forward to any theories that you got coming up let me know in the comments i would love to hear them patron updates thanks everybody for supporting comic book herald over on patreon.com slash comic book herald if you are interested in doing so you can go over to that url and of course you can support the site for as little as one dollar a month and get certain benefits based on your tier of support all of it 
is extremely, extremely appreciated. If you don't want to do that, definitely please consider liking and subscribing the Comic Book Herald channel here, and that helps me reach more people as well. In particular, I want to thank today Ron Paul Kirkley, Jesse W., Professor Pride, Steve Brennan, Cole Weathers, Martin Lopez, Chris Isidro, Brent Bowser, and Professor X3769. I'm Dave. You can find my stuff at comicbookherald.com, at comicbookherald, pretty much anywhere online. Look for the best comics ever in my Marvelous Year podcast for more from me. So that's the road to the king in black. Let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments. In the meantime, everybody, thanks for listening. And as always, enjoy the comics.